Um, you know, I think we should touch on Jimmy Greaves before we get into the game. And, you know, it's a massive, massive loss, uh, not just to the Spurs community, but to the whole uh, footballing community as a whole, you know. Um, played great football for Chelsea, Tottenham, AC Milan, went on to play for West Ham as well uh, in the twilight of his career. So uh, one of the greatest strikers to grace the game of football, never mind in Tottenham shirt. Yeah, and his goal-scoring record was absolutely incredible. I remember looking at... Um like a ratio, like goals to per game ratio. So I think I was like, Harry Kane's was like pretty good. And like in the Spurs shirt and in an England shirt, I was like, Harry Kane is very hard to match. And like Greaves is like better than his, like a lot better. And he played for a lot longer, a lot more games as well. Um, and also when you look at clips, I always thought this when I used to look at old clips of Jimmy Greaves, like, like you, you, you wouldn't be able to tell he's playing on a pitch in the 60s. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The way he just moves along that uh, that pitch, like he doesn't bobble, he doesn't slow down. He's just so silky, and the way he passes the ball into the back of the net as if it's uh, um, as if he's playing on a fine carpet like we do nowadays in the, in the Premier League. That's what it seemed like, and he was, a, he was clearly an incredible uh, player, um, a, an incredible striker. And look, he's going to be sorely missed. Obviously, we never got the um, opportunity uh, or privilege to see him play live, which would have been unbelievable. But, um, you know, way before our time. But the, from the clips I've seen, he was a, a truly, truly great striker. Yeah, and I was listening to some of the kind of um, talks on Talk Sport last night. Paul Coit was on there and a few other. Gary Mabbott was on there and a few great other Spurs legends. Great to see Paul Coit yesterday, Yeah, well, well, yeah, it was great to see him uh, back at the Spurs stadium. But what people were calling in and saying about him was that you know, he was very much like Messi with the ball glued to his feet, um, never really smashed the ball into the back of the net, always passed it, um, could take it round the keeper with ease, could take it round defenders with ease. And he was very much likened to Lionel Messi in terms of his style of playing, the way he played football. And his goal scoring record kind of backs it up as well. Um, so yeah, absolute, true, true, true legend of the game. And, you know, that, that term legend gets banded about way too easily these days. It really does. But he is a true legend, isn't he? Absolutely, yeah. Well, with the, with what he's won and <coughs> his goal scoring record, and a very few match it, very few match it, and his goal scoring record at Tottenham has stood for a very long time. Yeah, maybe Kane will beat it, but it's um it's a very very uh, impressive um goal haul he's got, and I'm. Um, Look, um, he's going to be sorely missed within the whole footballing community, Jimmy there was, there was quite a funny story that they were, were talking about on Talk Sport when um, Bobby Moore was in uh, Bogota, right? Hmm. Um, and it was a complete um, made-up charge. But anyway, they were trying to do him for some some sort of theft or something, Bobby Moore, right? Hmm. And he was on house arrest in the British Embassy out in Bogota. And... Um, and they were best mates, uh, Jimmy Greaves and Bobby Moore, literally best mates. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't separate them. And as soon as he found out what was happening, he got on a plane to Bogota, Jimmy Greaves. He, he, he climbs around the back of the, uh, the embassy, the British embassy in Bogota, and he, found, he finds a window that's open. He climbs into this window and he's searching through doors and doors and doors uh, to try and find Bobby Moore in this, uh, in this uh, place in the uh, British embassy. Finally finds him. And, and apparently uh, the official, officials just come into this room like expecting to see him just under house arrest and them two are just chilling and, <laughs> and drinking wine together and all this kind of stuff. And um, eventually Bobby Moore did get released and um, apparently has a lot to do with uh, Jimmy Greaves and his efforts to, uh, to try and go and find him. And, you know, he wouldn't let his friend uh, be under any sort of um, un- unlawful arrest like that. So, um, yeah, wow. it just showed Great what, what kind of a man he was. He seemed like a proper character as well, mm. Jimmy Grooves. And he also used to do a lot, a lot of TV appearances when he after retired as well. He used to be like quite a good personality, yeah. Jimmy Greaves. Um, so it's a funny old game. That's where it comes from, from yeah, Jimmy Greaves. From Jimmy Greaves, isn't it? And also, um, oh, what was the other story that I was trying to trying to remember? Oh, yeah, that one of his uh, one of his famous quotes was. Um, yeah, I had a goal scoring drought once. It lasted all fi- all of fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah it's a terrible <laughs> fifteen minutes. He says on that, yeah. <laughs> but look, his goal scoring record in his whole career is phenomenal: six hundred and sixty six appearances, four hundred forty seven goals. It's madness. Yeah, it's mad numbers. And he went he went to AC Milan, right? And he didn't last long. I think he was there for three or four months or something in AC Milan. And he was so homesick. I was hearing this on the radio last night that he was so homesick and he was dying to leave. But every time he got on the pitch, he just scored a goal and it made it so hard for AC Milan to let him go. Like, <laughs> he, was great, just, he had a great record for them. He had, yeah, uh, he did. 12, 12 games, nine goals. That's what I'm saying. And he, he didn't stay too long, but 
it was so hard for AC Milan to let him go because he was it's such a good goal scoring record, but he just wasn't happy there whatsoever. Um, but it just shows like even even when your mind's not on the game, like for Jimmy Greaves, like he still scored bucket loads of goals. Yeah, that's the thing, and he was an incredible play, incredible player. So yeah, so obviously he, at eighty one years of age, he's had a few health scares before, so. It wasn't like a complete shock, yeah. like him passing away on. But you know, to do it on the day of Spurs Chelsea was quite poignant. I felt. Yeah, it was. I'm um, obviously a legend for both clubs. And when uh, the tributes were running out in the stadium uh, just before kickoff yesterday, um, there was not one person in that stadium that was not standing up, clapping, and showing their appreciation to the great man uh, that he was. Um, Chelsea and Spurs fans alike. And there was also a nice tribute to him at the West Ham um, Stadium as well for the Man United game. So. Um, Absolute respect all round from the whole footballing community for Jimmy Greaves, and mm-hmm. rightly so. So uh, rest in peace, Jimmy. You're going to be sorely missed, and you're going to be um, <coughs> etched in the clubs, not just the clubs, but the footballing records uh, forever. Definitely. Absolutely forever. What a legend of the game. Yeah. When mm-hmm. you're growing up, it's all you hear, Jimmy Greaves, yeah. the greatest ever player, greatest Tottenham, greatest ever goal scorer. This is one of the ma- main names you hear when you're growing up as a Tottenham fan. It's definitely, definitely someone you would have heard of. There's no definitely. one who goes through life being a Tottenham fan who hasn't heard of Jimmy Greaves. And that just shows the legacy he, he left. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, but that is our tribute to Jimmy Greaves. Yeah!